All right, yeah, okay. Morning, guys. Those of you guys on YouTube, and this is going to be our advanced life support training, but we will also be dipping into um, basic life support for medics. Uh, those of you guys who are watching this, just be aware I'm going to be dropping some like extreme terminology, so if you don't get it, uh, use Google and go watch my other videos. It's all going to be attached to a playlist. For those of you guys standing in front of me, have you seen my Google Docs page? Yes. I believe so, yes, but the outdated one. I haven't looked at it since it was updated. Well, look at the new one. It's updated, I guess, partially. Um, I've got video links posted there. Uh, there is a playlist for basic life support for those of you who are introducing yourselves to medical. Um, there's also basic life support for infantrymen and those who aren't medics. That's the gist. Uh, today we're just going to go crash course through ALS and then later on in a week or two I'll post a advanced life support video by myself. That way you guys can get a gist of what it's like performing as a single operator. Okay, so let's get started. Um, wait, everyone in front of me is familiar with the patient um, medical menu and how to utilize it to its fullest extent? Yes, sir. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a patient. I just want to know what I can skip and what I actually have to uh, look at. User left your channel. User left your oh channel. no, User your patient's your been shot by a Russian using American weapons. I don't know. Shit happens. Okay. Uh, oh no, he took a wrong turn. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, last thing. Don't use the like three words we can't say on YouTube. You already know what they are. Don't use them, please. I don't want to redo this shit or edit it. Okay, your patient's lost a lot of blood blah 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 um y'all can see the patient menu right fred you're pretty far back <laughs> yeah just come yes. open up the patient menu we're all gonna be staring at this dude anyway okay so he's lost a fatal amount of blood the first things you want to focus on on a patient are the more you have a scale from white to red you want to focus on the thing that's closest to red because that's where your patient's blood loss is coming from if your patient has fatal, don't even bother like actually trying to uh, bandage those wounds. If it's an extremity, just go ahead and tourniquet. You know, like if there's more than two wounds, like on his arm, right? Straight up tourniquet. I, I do not have time for that. Now, uh, in a situation for a standard medic, your IV does your IV placement does matter. So placing it on the least wounded limb, so you have a scale from, when you bandage something, you have a scale from white to blue, to dark blue. I don't know what they call the color, I'm not an artist, but um, generally speaking, you want to aim for the limb closest to white as possible. Your IV will be more effective that way. So we're going to go ahead and start an IV on the, I believe that's the left leg. Yes. Yay. Okay, so you start an IV. Your patient lost a large amount of blood. We're going to go ahead and check for pulse because we stopped the bleeding. User this left is crucial. User He's got channel. a heart rate of 215. Anything above literally 200 is considered cardiac arrest. If your patient's at 130, this is what we call a compensated shock, and we're saying he's approaching cardiac arrest. So User because he's lost channel. a large amount, right, and let's just say you have multiple patients, I'd go ahead and drop a 1,000, a one liter bag, because, you know, he's approaching cardiac arrest. You might have more patients, and you User don't know how long you're going to work, because you still need to stitch the limbs. You guys are falling, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah, so yep. you've you User bandaged the body. You channel. haven't stitched. He's on a large amount of blood loss in what we call compensated shock. It's not shock yet, but he's approaching it very fast. Usually these people crash beforehand. Um, do not give them any drugs to drop their heart rate, and this is why. If you are... Hold on. Um, I'm trying to formulate this process in my head so you guys would understand. Uh, 
shock is based on like two things, right? So when your heart's in shock, it comes from, like, I think there's like five categories of shock, six depending on what state you live in. But generally speaking, uh, for Arma, your most likely um, point of shock is going to come from overdose or uh, hemorrhagic, which basically just stands for blood loss. Like, I mean, that's pretty clear, right? He's lost a large amount of blood. He's, you know, last heart rate was 250. First heart rate we took was at uh, a heart rate of 215. And from there, it's slowly decreasing because, you know, he's receiving blood and the bleeding stopped. So if anyone on the radio ever says, my patient's got a heart rate of, like, 160 and up, you should ask, does he have blood loss or did he take any medications? Because this is... This is probably what happened. Um, yeah, no, that's pretty much it. For ALS, you just need to be aware of the numbers. Because if you're not, your patient will crash and he probably will die because now you have to undo the steps that you did. Let's say, for instance, uh, are you guys familiar with the denosine? Uh, no. All right, cool. Uh, this dude can put, be put on pause. If, uh, Mini, can you just stitch him real quick? Yep, I'll get on that. Yeah. And we're just gonna leave him alone if y'all wanna exit that menu channel. and open up your inventory. Actually, I'm gonna check your bags real quick. Your drugs are in your backpacks, right? Uh, yeah, I stole uh, the same kit. if they kit grabbed them. my kit, then no. Oh, then no, oh, yeah. Never mind, then. No. Uh, what check your chest plate and stuff or your uniform just tell me where all your drugs are I Minnie, mean, where do you keep your drugs is it in your vest or is all, it in your uniform all in the plate carrier, yeah, all in the plate carrier uh, yeah. uniform is bandages bag is blood and plate carrier is literally everything else that is the most lumped in there freaking organized thing i've ever heard of <laughs> i'm an ocd maniac what can i say yeah it gives me something to work with i take it no, i can't even argue with that i keep like the same general gist uh, just my stuff that usually gets taken is in my backpack, so that way I don't have to drop stuff from my inventory. Um, Alright, so... I'm gonna go over a list of medications you should have on your personnel. You don't get access to norepinephrine, do you? Not on this for uh, Not on this server. Reason. This server, but you get it on the fucking yeah. liberation. Okay, so I'm gonna this go ahead and drop y'all some norepinephrine. Because you will have it in practice. Those of you who are watching this, if you play the Karma Liberation 24-7, you do have norepinephrine at your disposal. Those of you who are watching it because it popped up on your Google for videos and you're like, Ah, oh, let me go do this. I severely don't know what to tell you. You're kind of going to get lost on this. Um... Oh, yeah, uh, those of you that did grab my kit, I'm an idiot, and I completely forgot to grab painkillers on this kit, so... No, I we don't need painkillers. The general the gist is just don't go over 11. I forgot both of those. I am an intellectual human being. Uh, oh, no, ju just dump some combat supplies. I, I've only run out of ammunition one time as a medic with just six mags and that's when i'm just getting zerg rushed honestly if you're playing medic and you actively have to shoot your weapon you're probably gonna run out of ammo anyway yeah okay so i dropped Sorry, like 10 nor what was that uh what was the extra stuff i was grabbing you said it wasn't in uh painkillers and yeah. ammonium carbonate both under the magazines tab at the bottom i see yep I completely forgot to grab them, so apologies. Alright, I dropped norepinephrine in this first crooked medical crate. Yep, I grabbed two. Yeah, so go ahead and snag some of those. Is this what it looks like on this server? No, those are just smoke grenades, okay. I was concerned for a minute, since the training server is all kinds of out of whack compared to the actual liberation. It is a good point. Fred, let me know when you're ready to go, and then I'm going to run down medications. Uh, do you guys want to take notes for this, or do you want to just let me know now so I can give you some time? User left your channel. User joined Shit, your channel. still have a pulse. Yeah, he's fine. Awesome. Oh, yeah, uh, I'll, I'm good. probably stay there. Okay, cool. Everybody open up your inventory, and I'm just going to start running off the drugs, starting with epinephrine and working our way to uh, phenylephrine. So, 
epinephrine is basically um your life saving lifesaver uh real life they use it for allergic reactions so it's in here because it's ace the dude who programs this i'm pretty sure is an a emt in real life so we're just gonna work with what we got here epinephrine's your bread and butter for uh cardiac arrest if you're since you're here in this class i'm gonna go ahead and teach you what this alternatively is used for um if you have a patient who's you've already done three rounds of cpr on maybe even two and he has not regained a heart rate go ahead and oh, sorry go ahead and give him uh one dose of epinephrine into the arm leg whatever just as long as it's a limb that's not tourniqueted um yeah give him one dose of epinephrine left your channel. every two User minutes your channel. you cannot exceed three doses of epinephrine on a single patient they will die uh, a good way to keep track of this, and I, I call this the triple check, is you ask whoever was attending to them first, hey, uh, did this patient have, you know, did you give them any epinephrine? If that person says no, you go to the triage card and then you check yourself because you do not want to accidentally give them a third dose and then blow up his heart and now he's dead. Uh... Yeah, that's pretty much it for epinephrine. It's it's half-life is like a minute and a half. Somewhere in that region. Basically, if you use it, I'd wait safely three minutes before giving a second dose. Uh, then, yeah, just continue CPR back-to-back. -back. Don't even bother checking pulse. Just do two rounds of CPR back-to-back -back and then check pulse. And you'll probably get one. Um, okay. Yeah, that's that for epinephrine. It's pretty simple, but it's also pretty complicated because people forget about the rule of threes. A heart explodes. No more patient. Uh, we're going to work with morphine now. My most hated drug in the box because it should never be used unless a critical situation. Just give me one second. I'm trying to find it. I don't, I don't even know where my own morphine is. Um... There it is. Okay. Do you want me to drop one? Okay. No, I got it. Uh, so, morphine auto-injector. By the way, auto-injectors can be used by anyone. It doesn't matter if their role has it or not. Because it's, you know, it's an auto-injector. You just stick it in your leg and it's done. Um, so, if you need someone to give someone else and you're too busy doing something, you can ask them to go into your backpack, snag it out, go around, and put it on this person. Uh, Actually, a uh, fun fact, that only applies for morphine. Unless you're a medic, you can't use adenosine or epinephrine. Because I guess... They made that I an advanced treatment. special training to use those auto-injectors that have different colors than red. Okay, I'll take that back. I guess they User up the server scale. Um, disregard what I said. We're going to go ahead and Unless say... Unless it was changed recently. Last I checked, that couldn't be done. Well, I thought you just could get it from the arsenal, but now you can't use it. That makes it a whole nother stick um so yeah it's an odd mix where only medics can grab adenosine but everyone can grab epinephrine and morphine but only medics can use the epinephrine okay well it's wild yeah we're just gonna go off of this so morphine is basically your overpowered pain killer uh it will lower the heart rate and the blood pressure of your patient if you give two within a span of like User joined your is channel. it officially 30? I, I use the rule of three, so it's like 30, three minutes, uh, three, 15, and 30. So I'm going to go ahead User and say safely, do not use more than one morphine User every 30 minutes channel. or your patient will die. Like He will go unconscious. He's going to be in cardiac arrest right off the bat, and that's it. Um, so... Yeah, just be cautious. Be super cautious with using morphine because it lowers all all of your critical vital signs to bare minimum consciousness. But it will eliminate every pain you feel. Also, for those of you who play one nine or platoon medic, um, you can use morphine to substitute lidocaine when uh, setting arms. 
this is only available for simple fractures for more He's complex fractures and stuff like that you're gonna I, i'm gonna be honest with you just use lidocaine don't even bother using the morphine because it's not gonna last User very long your channel User left your channel. User joined okay, your channel. Okay, so that's everybody's familiar with morphine, right? User joined yes. your channel. Yep. yep. All right. A bit. A bit. Is there uh, a time you don't want to use it? Yeah, anytime Not you don't have to. Every. <laughs> uh, it, if you ask me. Morphine is kind of like your last ditch effort. If you're in a firefight and this enemy is actively going to kill you in the next two seconds, I don't know, he's like 15 meters away and you need something to stabilize your aim, go ahead and pop a morphine. Just let it be known. It's going to lower your blood down. pressure, your heart rate. So if you do get shot and you just happen to lose enough blood, uh, you will pass out much faster. User left your channel. User joined yeah, your channel. Basically, it's your last ditch on i need to shoot that man in the face like yesterday or he's gonna murder me User yeah preferably it's it's not something that we use User very often uh if you don't have naloxone and this dude's heart rate is at like i don't know 240 but he's not bleeding there's no blood loss or whatever yeah i'd pop the morphine because i don't have something to counteract whatever like if it's an overdose right say he overdosed on epinephrine and you just do not have the uh, naloxone, which you should be carrying on your personnel, whether you used it or you forgot it, pop the morphine. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Yeah. No. Ask me questions because we're this is advanced life support. We we're gonna hit all those nails. Yep. Once again, how do you tell uh, somebody's going into cardiac arrest? Any heart rate. Uh, cardiac arrest is defined by upper 200 but if i see any heart rate that's at like 160 and up and climbing so you have to take two for that if it's 160 and you do a second one four seconds later and it's going up they're in compensated shock so it's going to lead to cardiac arrest all right um if it's going down you know from 160 and it's slowly falling down i mean like really slowly you have to wait like six seconds just to get another you know little marker that's not not 160 uh you gotta wait six seconds for that so yeah i don't know it'll be pretty obvious shock is pretty definitive it's like they're either you check the triage card they've got like three epinephrine in their system uh they'll be going into shock really fast or two morphine you know it's an overdose uh and if they have a fatal blood loss along with the super high heart rate, then it's definitive as shock. That's pretty much your criteria. I, I don't know how else to define it. Um, it'll be like super obvious. And if it's, you know, if this dude's not covered in blood when you walk up to him and his heart rate's that high, it's probably an overdose and you can just check the triage card. Those of you guys, you all know how to view the triage card, right? It's the far left thing under examine and treatment. And it gives you a list of medications. Actually, basically, it's a list of any medical intervention given. And it gives you a time frame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I, I don't know. You, you asked the question. Uh, there's a more convoluted answer to it. I could run around for, like, 45 minutes trying to explain to you the six categories of shock and how to identify them. But generally speaking, the only one you're going to run into is... You know, the dude's been shot to shit, or um, your patient had an overdose and he needs fixing. Alright. So, everybody's good on cardiac arrest? Yep. yep. Yes. Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> okay. Um, those are the scenarios you'd only use morphine in, is like, if you don't have naloxone and he's on an overdose with epinephrine or he's in severe pain you're literally just about to die and you don't have time then i pop the morphine you must be aware the morphine is going to last 30 minutes so if you don't have a narcan and neutralize it later you better tell that dude he's gonna have to stick with listen to his own heartbeat for the next 30 minutes it's a very effective drug so you know, and you cannot give any more uh, anything else that decreases 
their heart rate or blood pressure. So no adenosine after that for the next 30 minutes and no uh, nitroglycerin for the next 30 minutes or morphine. Yeah, so if you pop one morphine, you're restricting yourself in the long run, which is kind of why I say don't use it as much as possible. Does that make sense? I know a bunch of infantrymen on the server like to use it, but they don't understand the drawback for a medic. If they go down, we literally cannot do anything for them unless we have naloxone, which is why I'm kind of making it a thing for people to carry uh, naloxone. Okay, I'm going to be honest. I did not like that. I used naloxone three times. I'm going to go back to using Narcan. This, it's a brand name. They both are the same thing. I hate using the word naloxone. It just it gets me every time. That's something I'd see in a textbook, not in real life. Um, yeah, morphine is just super powerful. I don't. I've chastised morphine for about like five to ten minutes now, so I'm gonna move on to the next drug. Naloxone, Narcan, same thing. Learn the names. Uh, if someone says pop a Narcan or pop a Naloxone, give it to the patient. Uh, they're going to need it because they used a drug and it's only used to reverse. Even though it says opioids, you can use it to block every drug in this game. Reality check, that's not how it works. You can only User use it for opioids. Um, yeah, so that's it for Naloxone, you know. So what does it do and when do you use it? Any medications, if you have a medication uh, like a medical overdose, um, here, let me do it. Everybody check this patient because I'm about to do some things and you're going to understand. We're injecting him full of chemicals. Yep. So let's just say I was being impatient, right? And he's not having a high enough heart rate. I'm going to be an idiot and give two epinephrine. This is a real scenario, actually. People will be super impatient, and they're like, I can just hit him with a bunch because on other servers, ACE isn't just defined that way. So obviously, that heart rate is climbing, right? Forget the blood pressure. You see the heart rate? That's not okay. Uh, first thing you're going to give is naloxone. This is a one-to-one -one ratio. That means for every drug given, left your you have to give one to counter it. So if I give two epinephrine, how much naloxone would I need to counter? Two. Two. Cool. Everybody's on the same page. That is correct. Uh, that heart rate should be going down again. If you guys were checking the pulse for uh, that one person who had the question about how you identify shock, you kind of saw how it was pretty blatantly obvious once you checked the pulse that something was wrong. Right. Yeah, just it being so high. Yeah, it just goes from 152 to 70, and you're like, okay, yeah, this is bad. Um, it's it's a very fast thing. Um, so it should be dropping now. Like, very slowly. Yeah. Yeah, so that's how you identify overdoses as a whole. If their heart rate is jumping high or dropping like tanking out of the blue and there's no blood loss it's probably an overdose we don't have allergic reactions on this server so it's most likely an overdose <laughs> all right so that's that um what else what else we're going to talk about adenosine now because that's like the most basic drug i can tell you guys to use without giving myself a seizure about overusing or underusing it um Okay, so adenosine is basically a drug that only focuses on heart rate. It will knock at least 10 points off your patient's heart rate. Um, so if you just did CPR, right, this patient's back, but he's already at, lost some blood, and he just regained a pulse, go ahead and smack an adenosine in him. Like, just give him one, because it's going to knock him down 10 points monitor him for a little bit and if User necessary hit him with another one if he's like User stuck at 120 and it's not going down to 90. I am talking about heart rate. This is not blood pressure. This is heart rate. Um, that's it for adenosine. There's no contraindicators. I mean, yeah, one contraindicator. Contraindicators just means uh, obvious signs that you shouldn't use this, right? So like 
if the, his heart rate is already at 43, do I really want to give him User joined your an adenosine? So that's kind of what a contraindicator is if you hear me using stuff interchangeably. User left your channel. Yep, so uh, that's User adenosine. We're going to go ahead and move on to one of my favorite drugs. Um, and that is, where are you? Nitroglycerin. Actually, it's norepinephrine, but I'm just going to go to nitro because I don't know where my norepi went. Um, nitroglycerin and norepinephrine only focus on blood pressure. Uh, norepinephrine will raise your heart rate just a little bit, but not too much. If you need a couple, I'll put it in here. There you go. Oh, thanks. Yeah, uh... Here, I'm hmm. giving you a couple. There you go. Thank oh, you. I got, like, ten in my bag. Thanks. Oh, then. Never mind. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to explain. Oh, have... Wait, can I use these? Uh, not on this server. I just want you to have them because you know what you look like. Because on the other one, you can. I don't have the oh, right, in, but I have the bottle. Oh yeah, does he? Did his IV fall out? It did. I'm okay. Right now. Nitroglycerin and norepinephrine can only be introduced by an we IV. Can. We can push it. Okay, cool. Um, so basically, what I'm saying is, you need an IV to just give the drug. Period. If you don't have one, don't expect to be like, oh, where's the nitroglycerin? It's broken. Uh, it's not broken. You just didn't start an IV. Yeah, there's auto-injectors, hence the inject when it comes to medication. And then there's bottles, which is where the push comes it's, in. Yeah, it's a liquid format. Um, you wouldn't exactly drink nitroglycerin. I would not recommend this. Actually, there's a sublingual. There are little tablets, and there's a spray for it, but... True, but I don't think you should just, like, take a bottle of nitroglycerin and just down it. Yeah, no, that's an IV thing. That will make you pass out. Uh, yeah, so that's... Nitroglycerin will lower your patient's blood pressure. In this case, he's on lost a lot of blood. How wonderful, right? He's got a blood pressure of 109. What's his... Oh, his heart rate's still pretty high. This is one of those cases where I'd use adenosine, right? Because I just want to speed up this process because we're not going to stand here for 40 minutes. While his heart rate's coming down, I'm going to go over norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is the counter to nitroglycerin. All it does is increase your blood pressure and your heart rate just a little bit. Um, nitro brings your blood pressure down. Norepinephrine brings your uh, blood pressure up. If you ever play on the server while I'm one nining and you're an ogre, unfortunately, if I ever say norepi, just know I'm referencing norepinephrine. I just don't feel like typing the whole thing. Um, cause these medications are long. Epinephrine is one of the longest type medications I've had to stare at on this server. For those of you watching this YouTube video that are medics in another state other than California, yes, I'm fully aware there's like 10 syllable medications out there that I don't care about and I don't use. Do not chastise me on this. Anywho, uh, how's our patient doing? He's down to 120. Is blood pressure and pulse be ideally. Uh, 120 over 80 for blood pressure. Heart rate it should be around 80, or 80 to like 90. Uh, but for blood pressure, you you want to get as close as possible to 120. So, uh, is there a limit to how many adenosine we can give? There's no limit to adenosine, uh, just like, once again, if you knock his heart rate too low, it's going to be a pain in the ass to get it back up. It's harder to go up than down with heart rate, and for blood pressure, it's, blood pressure, it's vice versa, it's harder to get it down than to go it back, back up, so, you know. Gotcha. But, yeah. Oh, our ideal for his heart rate is, like, 60, right? No, or it's 80. It's 80, sorry. Uh, if he's at 60, he's User probably barely channel. conscious. If that drops to 40, he's about to pass out. If it goes anywhere below that, you should consider calling an advanced level of care. Why is his heart rate still at... That's, uh... Uh, the adenosine wears off just like that. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure I'd... Like, it was at 122. Yeah, and then it just went right back up to 130. 
Um, did we neutralize all the epinephrine? We did. Uh, just kind of bear with me here. Any questions on nitroglycerin so far? No, but I can we go back to the I just have one quick question about Narcan since we're talking about all these meds. Does it eliminate in the order given? Yes. Yes, okay. it will eliminate so, the most recently given drug. Yeah. So if you push oh, it so go ahead. Oh it goes back. So if you if morphine was like five user joined your like channel. somebody gave morphine and then gave all this other stuff. User left your to channel. To get to the morphine you'd have to give them like five Narcans. Yep. That's gotcha. exactly yeah. how that would work. It also applies to painkillers. So if somebody shoots themselves up with two morphine and somehow downs five painkillers before they pass out, you'll have to give them six in order to just counteract the first morphine and seven if you want to counteract both. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's why it's such a pain in the you ass when people, um, you know, overdose on morphine and they push like 20 epinephrine to keep it. If your patient's still alive after 20 rounds of epinephrine, Good on you, mate, because he shouldn't be. <laughs> but, uh... Or he's just injecting them all into a tourniqueted limb and just tell them, dude, don't take off that tourniquet, no matter what. <laughs> yeah, that's the alternative. It's, we it's pretty bad. We might as well just amputate at this point. Lost cause to take that off. Well, his baseline blood pressure was at, like, 70, so I'll go ahead and give him a 500... Um, what I'm doing is like, I'm, I'm doing the mathematics right now. You don't have to worry about this. This is one nine level training. I'll have a separate video on how to properly one nine and deal with mass cash triage. Uh, all you guys need to know now is, uh, Nar Narcan, Use right? And Naloxone, dude, it is when you have to use that for an opioid overdose and this dude's just been pumping himself full of drugs. Oh, same thing applies for painkillers. You overdose. Is it at 11 or is it after 11? At 11. At I 11? Tested, admittedly with a friend right right over by that building, actually. I collapsed very yeah. violently and died very shortly after. Yeah, so... Uh, it will kill you. Literally 11 painkillers will knock you out on the dot. If you... I swear, this is a half of a four. If you overdose on painkillers, first off, I'm going to slap you. Because you're an idiot for taking that many. Second off... Dude painkillers like if you take 11 of them i don't have 11 narcan on me it's hard to find 11 narcan in the field let alone at base <laughs> okay we're gonna have to sit there and just pump yeah, naloxone in your have face a very short lifespan in your system so if you overdose on them that means you were literally back to back administering 11 which um is more than any form of pain requires. Yeah, it's just, it's really stupid, and it's a pain in the ass for the medics. I mean, you asked that question, which was really good, and now you know yep. why Narcan is a pain in the ass to deal with, or opioid overdoses. Um, just, so, if you're going to have an opioid overdose for whatever reason, like, if you just gotta, just stick to morphines and let yourself pass out. Dude, I know, It'll right? make everything so much easier. Uh, as a medic, just have, for God's sake, have the Narcan, because if you start pumping drugs and you call 1-9 and I get out there and I'm thinking I'm going to utilize Narcan, and I check that triage card and I see like four different epinephrines, norepinephrine and whatnot, I'm going to just stop because this patient is honestly better off as he is. I, I won't be able to bring him back safely. There is a, I think. There's a there's like a percentage on this mortality rate for Arma, but for overdoses, the mortality rate is like 70% if we try to do something, and it's like 50 to 60 if we don't do anything. Cool, are you guys familiar with overdoses now and why it's very critical that you learn about this? Yes, I think for the most part. One the question I did have was uh, regarding the painkillers, like it takes a little bit of time for them to kick in, right? Yeah, it's like 20 seconds. Okay, so, like, we just tell people, okay, if you're in severe pain, take, like, what, six, six or something like that? Six to eight. Yeah, just give them six to eight and tell them to hang out, and if it's still that bad, come back Please to me, join your channel. and I will look at it, because as a medic, you're going to be trained on how to properly utilize 
painkillers. Everyone else is out there to just get rid of their severe pain. It's it's important to know the process because how you do it will User determine how the long they live when they eat the next bullet to their chest. User joined your channel. Um, okay, and then also like I noticed, I, I took a whole bunch of painkillers, and I had a broken bone. I came to you as one nine, one time, and then you fixed my bone. But then I was like in severe pain again. I was like, oh crap. I just took a whole bunch of painkillers right before. Did I give you lidocaine? No. <laughs> what did I give you? Morphine? You didn't give me anything. You were just like, okay, you're fixed. And I was like, okay. Oh, please somewhere. remind me the situation. <laughs> which which area were we at? Was it the mountain? I don't know. This was a few days ago, so it's okay. fine. It, it, it was probably... It was a big deal. I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so that's my bad. In certain situations, I will just, like fix it User that's because your bone i set your bone first off you guys don't know how painful it is hitting your shin on like anything with enough force mm -hmm. yeah so that's hitting your shin and that's the closest bone that you can actively feel other than your funny bone right um and your head your funny bone in your head um and your femur are like one of the bones that you're gonna feel when you hit it hard enough and it's going to hurt in your leg and rubbing it will not make it feel better so yeah when i fix a bone when i do a bone reduction you're gonna feel it <laughs> if i don't give you morphine you will be in severe pain um but in my case there was probably an unconscious dude and i was just trying to get through it so yeah i, th I think there was others you just like fix my bone and you're like oh i need to move somebody else but anyways it was just kind of yeah, I no, like, if I, okay, if, uh, I guess I'm in severe pain walking away from you. Yeah, no, Thank sorry. You for fixing me, but my, my whole purpose, like, if I ever do that, I'm not going to say anything for step two through three afterwards because I'm too busy trying to figure out how not to kill the next three User unconscious people in front of me. User joined um, generally speaking, you should know if I fix it and I say, User there, you're done, your go, uh, and you're still in severe pain, go locate your nearest medic User and just have them give you painkillers. If you're in pain... Our job as medics is to provide medical assistance, no matter it be how minor it is. You know, we're there to determine what it is and how we can treat it. Copy. Um, Actually, then also regarding that, because I took a whole bunch of painkillers and then I the suddenly wasn't severe pain, if there happened to be a firefight, like I was absolutely needed, would popping a morphine be okay at that point? I'm just yawning, sorry. Um, yeah, no. Uh, popping morphine, just... If you're gonna die in, like, the next two minutes, I mean, actual death from infantry, pop your morphine. Uh, if you're not gonna die, because morphine will hinder you in the long run. That's, like, 30 minutes we can't give you anything that can decrease your heart rate or your blood pressure. Okay. Which is why it's important. Um... I think this is a good chance to talk about overdosing, since I think he just did that. Oh. Yeah, he did. He's he's dead. <laughs> uh, he's dead. What do you yeah, overdose I on? Uh, I'm going to just call it magic morphine, where he kept administering something to deal with pain, and oh. now he's unconscious. So I'm just gonna cool, the AI it. knocked himself out. This is a rare one, so go ahead and um, mini do CPR. Um, yep. I'm going to go ahead, if you guys want to open up the system, you're going to watch how this should go in a situation like this. Because he'll just drop dead, right? It'll look perfect. Obviously, blood loss is not a consideration here, right? Um, so you're just going to be like, hey, partner, did you give any uh, epinephrine? I have not administered any drugs as of this time. Bam. I'm giving one dose of epinephrine. Doesn't matter where. You just got to say one dose. And they're going to be like, A-OK. -okay. And while your partner is doing CPR back to back, you can check his pulse. If it's literally uh, under 40, he's not. He does not have a pulse. It's your partner doing CPR. If he has a pulse that's you know above 40, he probably has his own pulse. So that's how you guys can do multiple person CPR. Um, Mini, go ahead and step off uh, after this one. I'm gonna go ahead and give him uh, user left your channel AED shot because it's not working. All right. Stand clear. 
You all might want to close your medical menu, by the way. Oh, yeah, 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 just back off the medical menu or you will get shocked and have severe pain. Check right. now you can check me. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. Uh, I'm not shocking, it's just doing that. I'm going to go for another shock. Check now clear. User joined your channel. Check for pulse. User left your channel. Damn, dude. Okay, you're gonna get a couple patients who are like this. Um, they just won't come back. So you just gotta keep doing compressions. Uh, I don't know what this guy gave himself. Can you give him like two naloxone? I'm gonna assume he gave himself like a morphine. Yep. Administering two naloxone. One in. User joined your yeah, channel. so uh, generally speaking, this is what your patient's going to look like. It's going to be really tedious and a lot of work. No, he gave himself epinephrine for some reason. When? Three minutes ago? No, that was the epinephrine that was administered earlier. Yeah, no, that was... User left oh, that was a long time ago? Okay. Yeah, wait, 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 three minutes ago? We, were, we weren't doing it three minutes it ago. It says minus, thir minus two minutes. That's what it's I was minus like. Minus seven okay. minutes for an epi. He took an epi. Yeah, okay. It's a, definitely an epinephrine. Um, okay. We gave him the two, right? The AI was in pain and administered an epinephrine. I don't know if User that joined helps. Channel. I don't know. It shouldn't. Uh, I don't know why he did it because epinephrine actually increases your pain. Yeah, I... Vasoconstrictor and bronchodilator. Don't worry about what I'm saying now. Like I said, it's a terminology heavy thing. Um, honestly, I'm tempted to just let this patient go because this is what overdose patients are going to be like. You're going to be sitting there working them for like five to ten minutes your squad lead is gonna be like hurry up and you're gonna look back and be like really huh yeah i'd love to do that if our squad wasn't you know overdosing themselves every five minutes He's back thank god okay yeah so uh y'all got to witness how tedious that was go do it yourself in the field with gunshots around you and artillery coming in and it's gonna be so frustrating um Oh god, where was I? Giving myself headaches. I think we we're talking about you asked the question about morphine and when to use it. Uh, did I answer that question? Yeah, I believe so. I was just uh, I I was mainly wondering like about uh, painkillers and morphine like if they can stack or anything they like do. that, but they only stack channel. on themselves. So uh like two. yes and no uh they stack in terms of effect this is why you have to know your drugs what they affect is how they will stack um okay. yeah but the but like it's two like i could technically take 10 painkillers and one morphine and still be walking around no technically speaking no i mean you could but because like i said they're not gonna overdose you right off the bat but you will pass out because the morphine will bring you to borderline consciousness painkillers also bring down your uh your, your pulse your and painkillers focus on like your blood pressure um mostly i think it levels your like pulse down it, by one it's it's a very yeah, minor it, it thing lowers vitals but morphine, yeah, one morphine alone is going to bring you down. Like two minutes at the most. Yeah, one morphine alone is going to bring you down to the borderline of consciousness. Giving yourself ten of these painkillers will make you unconscious because their effects are the same. Okay, gotcha. So yeah, that, if they're taken User right joined quickly. Channel. Okay. Quickly, Definitely. dude. Morphine's going to last like thirty minutes. You, you're only allowed like one painkiller after that. Uh, it's a very, like I said, morphine's a very serious drug, so if you're going to give User it, give it channel. by itself and nothing else. User joined your and channel. carry a naloxone just in case. Okay, well, that that just kind of goes User back to my other channel. question. Like, I just took six painkillers for left. whatever I was dealing channel. before. You fixed my bone. I'm in severe pain. User I need to get back in the channel. fight right away. It's just outside. Uh, like, just yesterday, I was in a CCP, and then we were being User bombarded by a... Uh, a BMP was right outside our door. Oh yeah, so, I was there. Oh yeah, we were all there for that. That was funny. They just rolled up on the fob and they were just like, "Hello." User joined your channel. Yeah, and anyways, we were we were just getting slaughtered outside, and I didn't even know which direction. And uh, 
say say you fix my bone like i in that instance i wasn't but say you fix my bone i'm in severe pain again but i just took six painkillers like here's the thing so painkillers are a long-term setter they're not going to fix it instantly they're a long-term uh problem solver morphine in that specific situation you have to take this into account i'm going to take this up now right so pain will make your heart rate go up. Your heart rate will make your blood pressure go up. Your heart's pumping faster it means your, User you know, the time. pressure in your uh, planes, you know, planes in your veins and arteries is going up. Okay. So you got to take this into account. Morphine affects User, your heart User rate and blood time. pressure. So when you take morphine, it'll knock both down. If you're User, if you're in severe time. pain after six painkillers. And it's been two minutes, and you're still in severe pain, and you pop a morphine. That's you because see, your heart rate is high channel. enough, and you're still conscious. It's because you your heart rate channel. is high enough that it can actually deal with the morphine. The morphine's gonna knock it down by what is it, sixty or seventy points? I, I don't know the math. I channel. can't remember the you numbers for that. But generally speaking, yeah, the morphine's gonna knock it down by a significant amount. If you just happen to be above that because of your lucky number. You know, you'll still be conscious, but the next bullet you take, you're going to go unconscious if you lose enough blood because your blood pressure is yeah, not going to be enough to sustain consciousness. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So they're all twisted. They're all the – your heart rate, blood pressure, and – um User joined your channel. Yeah, just your heart rate and blood pressure are intertwined in a fate. You need a certain – number of blood pressure in order to be conscious you need a certain number of heart rate to be conscious if you take one of those too low or you both bring both of them too low left they will channel. pass out this motherfucker i'm gonna go loot his inventory because he's gonna do something that i don't User want joined your channel <laughs> give himself another epi <laughs> i know right <sighs> that's 16 gauge iv on him i don't even know where that came from probably fell out uh, yeah in he perfect condition I don't know. It's on the ground, I, I dude. I watched him take it off. <laughs> yeah, so uh, generally speaking, that's that. Now you all understand why I hate morphine so much. It's because it get used improperly, and then people overdose, and so on. And they're like, hey, doc, I'm not feeling too well. I, You know, good idea of why that's happening is probably because you weren't paying attention when you used this. Um... I have another experiment, experiment on the patient to figure out the exact effects of morphine. Go for it. Yeah, guys, get a look because it's freaking frustrating. Um, what was your other question? Somebody else had a question. Um, mine was about uh, like regular infantry in the field. Yep. The, we tend to carry like at least one morphine, one epi. Like, what is my game doing? There we go. I know I can use morphine on people, but like, user left user user channel. Fire. Um, are Epis even allowed by other players other than Medic or One Nine? Uh, that's a server thing, as far as my knowledge, because you know this thing like goes all haywire and whatnot. Put him into shock, and he's not even at normal pulse. Jesus. Um, how do I explain this? The server is constantly changing because of the medical thing. When Ace updates, when the Ace guy updates his mod, uh, our servers change their mods to fit whatever they feel like i'm not in charge of that board i kind of just take what oat says has changed and then make it into something better or you know it's something that works for us okay yeah because my job is to make sure that you guys can perform efficiently in the field uh it's all up to the server admin you want my honest opinion i think it's like Mini, who who does the development? Is it WaterGuard? Is that our actual tech for? I think it's WaterGuard, right? That edits the server and shit. User joined your I channel. I have no idea. I'm gonna be honest. It's like WaterGuard or Beans. Basically, whenever they change shit, they'll post it in info or change log. I'm I'm an idiot. Yeah, and then I have to formulate to that. Okay, so you don't know if regular infantry can channel. carry or can use epinephrine. Right now, I don't because I haven't played infantry in like User a week. <laughs> I, I just can't. I couldn't remember, User but I was like, 
I I know that medics can, and I know that one nine can. So I was like, I I think they can carry morphine, but they can't carry epinephrine or adenosine. But like generally speaking, all they need to know is they should not. Well, I mean, uh, you cut out there. And carrying it is different. I can't put an IV if I'm a regular rifleman. Right. That's called yeah, that's because that. it's under the advanced treatment. But medications fall under like you can start morphine because it's an auto injector. You can you should be able to do epinephrine, but once again that's a server admin thing. Even though it's an auto injector, you know, uh, certain soldiers can't do it because of how the server's designed. It's literally a convoluted answer that turns into a paradox. That depends on how the admins feel on what day. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I was just curious about that. So. Yeah, no, it's I'm, all good. I'm thinking, like, I don't play medic all the time, so when I'm a regular soldier, I want to be able to know, oh, hey, I can possibly help this guy, give him an epi, and start uh, depression. You got my Google thing. form? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I updated it. Go look at the basic life support intro to BLS video. That'll go over how to be an infantry and how to yeah, how to be an infantryman and still provide support. I spent 30 minutes fucking complaining about morphine. That is terrible. Oh, where exactly was that doc again? I had lost track of it. Uh, it's on like, it's it's on the new player and it's on the infantry. I don't know where the hell it got lost in, but I can DM you another uh, link if you need it. Oh, I think I found it. Cool. Any chance you could uh, go through some examples and say what you're, what stuff you're looking at, and then what you're doing to fix that? It for what like? Uh, just on people. Whatever, whatever they need. Uh, once again, I'm just gonna go ahead and reference a video. Today's ALS class. I'll go over that, but. I want to get through this drug stuff first because we spent a literal hour just right. getting through half that. Your channel. <laughs> I think you know what I mean. When you spend an hour on morphine, or at least 30 minutes on morphine, you got a bit of a problem. Um, I've lost count of how many uh, Narcans I've administered. I'm just basically trying to get a clean slate because this means being a pain in the ass. Uh, Dude. You're at 11 right now. I'll, uh, I'll fix this. Here's what you do. Triage card. Boop. <laughs> That's a good point. Let just let him be. Um, so, generally speaking, right? Um, check out the the Wait. intro to being a medic, basic life support medic, morphine, like under it bleeding. on the uh, you know Google form, and that's got a YouTube video that talks okay. specifically about how to be a medic. Today's course is like how to be an advanced medic in the field. So I'll I'll try to tag along onto that. Um, use the flow chart, use the resources given, it might, you know, ping pong, but for now, ask questions, and I'll try to hit on them as I go. I want to get through these drugs, because I want to not talk about drugs anymore. <laughs> I'm sewing them up right now. Uh, let's go and talk about phenyl effort. Yeah. User left your channel. Quick thing as well, I administered a morphine when this patient's heart rate was 93. It is 51 channel. and still dropping. He died. That yeah, how potent no. morphine is. He went from 93 to zero. Yeah, it takes like a huge amount off, and you're right back to zero heart rate. Uh, do you want to gotcha. save this dude, or do you want to just leave him? It's be? a scary thing. Uh, I'll I'll try it. All right, what go ahead hell? and do CPR. I'll just User give him one up. Yeah, basically, give morphine unless like your heart rate's like what 130. Right, I'm gonna start stitching again. That's a 24 yeah. seconds. I'll so, stitch his arm. Now you have a general idea of what it's like to deal with opioid overdoses. Uh, I've already talked about naloxone. I've already talked about epinephrine. Uh, norepinephrine Maybe and slightly. nitroglycerin. If you use this, right, at all. Five seconds. And you want to bring someone back to consciousness and they're at lost a lot of blood, you will need uh, ammonium carbonate to fix this. Um... I need a whole new patient, so I'm gonna just spawn another one. Go for it. Ah. <laughs> 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 All 
Alright. Oh no, our patient is bleeding. You know what, that was a bad idea, hold on. Oh god damn it. He was, hold on. He was in the midst of giving himself something. <laughs> Oh, what is this? All right, I'm gonna let him treat himself. I just want a like one wound to the head. That way, I don't have to treat like 40 different things. User left your channel. Yo, hold up! Don't even bother fixing this, dude. Does he have? He does. Fix yourself. Yes, fix yourself, indeed. All right, somebody stitch him. I'll get on it. How long is it? It's like 40? 30 seconds. 30, okay. If you guys cancel stitching, which is escape, by the way, if you're stitching and things go bad, uh, and you're like halfway through, some of the wounds will be stitched, some, some of them won't. Is it like five or is it eight seconds per wound? It's eight seconds per wound, so if you gotta cancel, User at least try to challenge. pass, uh, halfway. hold out until a multiple of eight. Yeah, so okay, it's... Yeah, I was wondering, I was like, I was in the midst and then I stopped, and then I was like, oh, okay, then I started again, yeah. I was... Yeah, so... Uh, that's uh, why, like, if amount, a patient like walks to you looking like he's from the Blue Man group, it's gonna take, User like, left sometimes channel. two minutes entirely to stitch him up. Because each wound is eight seconds. I'm pretty sure I saw Please some gray matter channel. bit all over Sea Folk's uniform. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> yeah, dude, headshots are super powerful. Now you know why I use the M16. That splatter is tremendous. Can you go ahead and stitch him? I'm just gonna create a problem on his leg. Stitch he doesn't have a pulse already. Ah, oh, that's right. We need to get a channel. pulse back. Stitching his head. Ooh. Uh, I stitched it up. Oh, yeah, wow. you got it. Hands off. Um, we're gonna talk about. You guys, did I go over norepinephrine? No, I didn't. I'm doing that now. That's why. Check for pulse. I wanted a patient that's not gonna fix cool. himself. One, I can establish an IVE. No, uh, we're gonna start from scratch on this one. I'm gonna show you exactly what norepinephrine is designed for, and I'm gonna use a fast IO. Check for pulse. Cool. All right. Should I wake him up? No, I'm doing this. Oh no, your patient has stepped on a landmine. Yeah, just gotta wait for that. <laughs> Dude, landmines yes, actually don't do that much damage. <laughs> they knock you out because of concussive force. This is due to, uh, like, I don't know, a tank shell landed next to your leg. Yeah. You've seen how bad it gets. IED. Oh no, your patient has struck an IED. Yeah. User joined your channel. We're gonna let him bleed. Just get him to that critical point. Yeah. If it's a large one, he's gonna get kicked through the air like a tin can and land in several pieces. User left your channel. User, User joined left your channel. channel. Oh no, your patient is... I don't know. You know... Whatever, he's lost a large amount of blood. Does he have a heart rate still? Yes. 153. Good. This is also, it's 153, right? All I did was shoot his leg until he bled out. No, this heart is, rate is gone. Uh, make sure you're not checking a tourniquet. Checking a tourniquet. Yeah. If no you, blood in, no blood out, so you won't find any vitals. Yeah, if you're doing a freaking yeah, check on a tourniquet, oh, yeah. right, check it again. It. No worries. Yeah, I've done it before as well where I'm just patching up a tourniqueted limb and then I check vitals out of sheer habit and see, oh no, he has none. And I yeah, check that's another a good point, limb I mean. and realize really quickly, yeah. Usually, yeah. if... Often, out of just habit at this point, User I'll always go to the channel. head to check pulse, uh, so that way when their pulse is in the perfect spot, I can just slap them immediately. Okay. And then you tourniquet the head. Unfortunately, uh, should that I is not fully something that bandage him up, or does that matter? Mm -hmm. 
Sorry, I timed out for a second. Uh, someone had a That's okay. question. Uh, should I just fully bandage him, or should I let him? I uh, leave him be. Doesn't matter. I just want to use him as an example for norepinephrine and carbonate. Everybody has carbonate, right? Yeah. If you All right. my kit again, uh, no, because I am an idiot and completely forgot. Let this be known, carbonate is extremely potent as well. Use it jacks up channel. your heart rate. And if you use, like, three of these, that patient's not waking up. And a matter of fact, they will die from smelling salts. Don't, don't be that be guy. I'm going to check on Mr. Smith here, actually. If I just give him three, will he just die? Uh, he should just plop out of, like, nowhere on number four. So, ammonium carbonate raises heart rate. Yes, like, slightly. Cool. It's like, I don't know, five, ten points. But, you know, that's User that. Left okay. your channel. Oh, no, my patient's lost a lot of blood. I'm going to check his blood pressure now. User joined your channel. Oh, no, it's super low. What the hell is this pulse? User left User your channel. User joined your channel. Oh! Oh no! Okay, in this case, my patient has a low pulse and uh, an even lower heart User rate. Left your channel. So I'm gonna be that guy User and administer channel. epinephrine once to increase both of those. So remember how I said User um, BP is connected to heart rate? They have a little relationship going on. Yeah, this is kind of yeah. a good example. If I see a blood pressure of 41 and this dude was just in shock, I'm going to check his heart rate because I'm scared that that is below what it needs to be. Are you still dosing him with carbonate? Yes. Maybe it just doesn't work on this server. In the real server, it does. You will overdose a patient on literal carbonate. It's not fun. So three is the magic number. run out of carbonate to administer his heart rate's now 90 i'm gonna He's go ahead and give this channel. dude some norepinephrine user joined your channel god damn it his heart rate's starting to go back down user left your channel so this is another thing you have to be cautious about and why I drop 1,000 uh, milliliter bags uh, on patients certain User times. Because if you have a mass cas, right, and your patient just crossed the threshold of lost a large amount and he's now at lost a lot, but he's still right between the two, his heart rate will go back to, like, you know, low and... You know, you're, you're not going to be looking at him, so you won't know until you come back and you're like, hey, what happened to him? And then you're confused, you like I was for channel. a quick minute until I realized what was going on. Now he's got a heart rate of 71. Let's check his blood pressure. It probably went back down. These norepinephrine doesn't last that long. User like joined your channel. The same as epinephrine. Yeah. User left your channel. User joined your channel. User joined your channel. User left your channel. User joined your channel. There's like a certain level of blood loss that needs to be met in order to User use uh, norepinephrine effectively. I channel. can't remember what it was. Uh, because it, it's a mathematics. User you guys... Let me ask you this. Do you guys ever track how much blood you put User into a person, like, channel. total? Uh, what do yes. you mean by that? Exactly? If I give a patient a bag of fluids, like, five minutes ago, and he's now at lost some blood, do you know exactly the number of, uh, User left your channel. of blood that's currently flowing through his body? User joined your channel. I know how much blood I have no. added that's flowing through his body right exactly my point i have to track that that's like one of those things that i mentally keep a checklist of and i didn't do it for this patient so i have no idea what his blood loss is well uh, you can see in his triage card he was given 500 mils plus two 250 plasma right right but you need to track from the start if he was at loss a lot how much blood did he lose 
and then you stop that point. You added 500. He just got to a lost a lot of blood. That's like a certain number. And then from there, you add on how much you've given. It's like trying to check User gas with your uh, with your little needle. User joined your channel. Does, you know how stupidly hard that is? You just know that you User either have a full your tank, your half tank, or you're empty, right? There's no there's no definitive indicator for mm -hmm. in between. User yeah, so that's what it's channel. like trying to check the blood loss. It's so stupid. But it, it does give you uh, somewhere to check. Alright, I'm going to do this one more time. User joined your channel. What happens if you give too much blood? Uh, you're wasting blood, and now you don't have supplies for the next mass cast you're about to face. User left User yeah, joined it won't your do channel. Anything, though. Yeah, it'll do something to you. <laughs> oh my goodness, I finally stabilized this User man to left normal, your channel. normal vitals. Holy crap. Congrats, dude. I'm still trying to get this dude's heart rate back User up. User joined your channel. I only had to give him four epinephrines and a Narcan to stabilize it. I'm not sure if I just missed it. Uh, did you explain, like, when to give plasma over blood? User joined your channel. Once again, go check my BLS video. Fluids do not matter. You don't give plasma over blood. You don't give saline over blood. They're all fluids. Okay. Uh... Who told you that they're uh, separate? I'd like to know. Uh, me checking the inventory. Oh. User left yep. your channel. Alright, well. Unfortunately, there was a rumor going around that that's not true. And then they were like, oh yeah, it, you know, it screws with all this stuff. And I wanted to go smack that person. Because it was literally a, just a huge lie. Like, I cannot begin to describe to you how frustrating it is when someone says that and oh man my patient's practically golden now so what i heard was that giving multiple types pizza all right giving Correct. what yeah like through one iv you can put User all left three channel. yes so all three can flow and they at the same will all time. Go through. but yeah. if you just give a whole bunch of blood it'll just put on top of whatever you've already given so it'll yes take longer think of this as like getting a cup and you go get a fountain drink right if you're um if you're trying to put coke in your little bottle jar or whatever User you have one channel. dispenser to go from but if you have coke dr pepper and pepsi all maxed up and you're just shoving that kfc size bucket in there uh you're gonna have a much faster flow rate that was a very weird analogy but yeah. yes do you guys understand User it left your channel basically a bucket faucet yeah, bucket and faucet. Do you think the bucket will Sounds fill good. from one faucet that has more water in it from three faucets that all have less water? Yeah, so that's pretty much It'll it. It'll take more time to turn the faucets on, but once they are on, that bucket will fill up much faster. Dude, I hate this patient. It is not working with me. This is why I don't like the training server settings. It's not that. I can't do it with this training User server. User joined your channel. <laughs> All right, because this guy's basically back to sleep. <laughs> I take it you're done with him. Not even, dude. Oh my god. Yeah, you Should know what? I am done. So he can't give himself anything. <laughs> no, I got a solution. I uh, back dumped him. <laughs> I think he's pretty dead. Yeah, he is now deceased. User joined your channel. Okay. You lost some blood though. <laughs> That's my problem well, with this I whole training server. His internal organs are likely riddled with holes as his soul is currently. No, his being internal organs down. became external on the other side with the amount of bullet holes I put. User left your channel. Uh, with that being said, I don't even want to bother with norepinephrine here. User generally speaking, channel. it's User used to increase channel. heart rate. You can use norepinephrine in conjunction with um allo ammonium carbonate to bring people back from the state of lost a lot of blood if User they're at lost some channel. blood do yourself a favor don't waste either of those unless their blood pressure is down follow the flow chart i posted and you'll have a general idea of what you need to do you technically can't overdose on norepinephrine but if you give more than three 
Their Who's blood pressure is going to be through the goddamn roof, and you're going to have to wait for that to come come down. So you have to administer naloxone. User joined your channel. The reason I'm saying you have to administer naloxone is because nitroglycerin uh, has a faster, um, what do you call it, half-life. So, you know, User nitroglycerin is like, I think it works for like a minute, User joined your channel. and norepinephrine is like channel. four minutes. So yeah, just whatever. I don't even want to bother with that. There's this other wonderful drug that One Nine has, and you guys need to be aware of it because when they use it, I hate running out of ammo. When they use it, it does you a lot of good. It's called phenylephrine. Uh, da, 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 da. Some tourniquets on him. Yeah, I generally don't care about this patient's well-being. He's just a means to an end. Oh, if y'all yeah, are gonna... Uh, go for it. Important segue. You didn't sign up to... Or you didn't swear to any oath as a combat medic. So feel free to shoot whoever you want in the face. On this server, dude. Don't, don't do it on the... Yeah. Don't do it on the live. We, we tried that. Do you remember that? We were messing around with the uh, the whole mechanics in the real, in the liberation, and we shot someone like 20 times, and then Odin was like, what the hell? <laughs> they were so close. Like, everybody was on board with it, and Odin was like, why? What did you do? <laughs> why are you doing this? <laughs> oh, yeah, dude, it is great. Uh oh. Alright, well, if you basically just Stand need for whatever clear. reason a patient that's perfectly normal, Mr. Max over here has reached that point. Oh boy, dude. Check for pulse. Man, I was laughing so hard. Um, anyway, we're gonna talk about phenylephrine. Phenylephrine is a mix of morphine and epinephrine. It's like. It really User is if like channel. norepinephrine and morphine had a child. User left your channel. User joined your channel. Um This dude should have a heart rate now, right? Yeah, okay. Guys, come over here, watch fast because I'm going to drop this and I'm not going to do it again. So I'm going to go ahead and put phenylephrine in. Somebody check the pulse. Somebody check the blood pressure. I need two individuals doing the same thing. I got a pulse. User All right, I'll channel. start on blood pressure then. Preferably over a limb that's not tourniqueted. So you see how the numbers are changing? One's rising, the other one's not. Yeah, User this is your child channel. god here. Phenylephrine decreases the heart rate <laughs> while increasing the blood pressure. <laughs> so yeah, I absolutely love it. Can that only be administered through fast IO, or does that matter? Uh, no, it's a one nine thing. So generally, yeah, uh, it's gotta it be is administered. Drug that can only be administered via IV. Yeah, so it. Fast IO is the same thing as an IV, it's just we can put it on the chest and it works a lot faster. The downside of the fast IO is it'll cause um, severe pain. So. Well, yeah, because we're literally putting a hole in your chest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's that. Can't the fast IO also be administered to the head? I wish. Jesus. Oh, is it just that? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just the chest. You put a anything. You're. Okay. <laughs> Heads up if you're becoming a medic. Yeah, do not even attempt saying that in front of any instructor. They're going to look at you like a retard and then try to move you out into another class. Um, so just be cautious. Why do they do this? Every time I do training, they show up with their helicopters that are noisy <laughs> as hell. Uh, it's, it's the diamond. The diamond air. Um, okay, so with that being said, right, 
now you guys are familiar with the majority of the drugs. I don't need to talk about TXA because TXA is a 1-9 privilege and you, you all have it has no effect on you guys, just 1-9s and their operations. That is all the drugs we have. Okay, we finally got through drugs. Dude, I spent an hour and 20 minutes talking about drugs. That's so stupid. Nice. Alright, do y'all have any questions about drugs before I try to move on to the ne next phase of my life? Because we spent so much time on this. Uh, do you have a recommendation of how much of each we should be carrying? Five. Five on drugs. Uh, epinephrine uh, should be ten. Adenosine should be ten, because you're going to be using that a lot more. Yeah, personally, I need to adjust my kit. I do... Two morphine, ten epi, twenty adenosine, and I need to start. I need to adjust this kit for everything yeah, else. Yeah, because you're you're gonna be blowing through adenosine like there's no tomorrow. It's hilarious. You carry like ten of those, dear God. You're like, huh? Unfortunate. Yep. Uh, bandages. I'd carry at least like fifteen of each. As a one nine, I struggle with carrying fifteen. As as a standard medic, I'd carry like twenty if possible. Like, at least 15 of each yeah, bandage. Yeah, I adjusted this kit to have about 35 of each, I think. Jeez, dude. You must be lacking on critical equipment. I'm impressed by the amount of blood you can I, I stuff in there. I was mainly wondering about the drugs, but, like, bandages was part of the basic that I was like, okay, well, here's what we need basic-wise. It um, is, in but... General, but... As an ALS level provider, which I'm teaching you to be, you're going to be working smarter and not harder, so you'll live you much longer than a basic channel. person. Not trying to, you know, downgrade all you guys that are watching the video now, but you get the general gist. If you're a rifleman and you're watching this, if you're a medic and you're watching this and you haven't learned the ALS skill, you're probably going to die a lot faster. If you're ALS, like me and many out there, we'll, we'll be surviving on a mass CAS after you literally three squads channel. have been wiped and we're just trying to get out of places. So, that's the level of care that I'm trying to prep you for. Because you will probably be the last one standing if you play it smart. Question? Send. How is this man conscience? Uh, what do you mean? Look at his vitals. How the hell is he conscious right The blood now? pressure or the heart rate? Because both of them are pretty both. low. Both of them. Once again, He's it's like 40. Uh, a lot of people who get wounds will pass out around 60 at a heart rate, but... Because he's only at lost some blood, he can still maintain, um, you know. Got it. User so this is channel. kind of the time where your patient would probably say, I hear my heart beating. User joined your channel. And then we're going to be like, yep, you sure do, because you took morphine, and you shouldn't have. So. By the way, that's not fixable by giving epinephrine. It's only fixable by administering... Uh, Narcan or providing this patient. Narcan is going to be your long term because it's probably a drug that did it for this specific patient. For overdoses, naloxone is going to be your long term fixer. Epinephrine is a short term fixer. That's that. Any other questions? Before I go into operations and radio operations. Do I have permission to show how to properly tell a patient to not administer a second morphine? No, because we all know, and it's not favored by Odin, so... That's a good point. Yeah, um... Any other questions? I'm gonna take that as a no. All right. Okay, he's injecting himself again. I don't care. Stop Check that. Goddamn fire. No more morphine for you. Um. All right, radio operations. If I ask for a sit rep, I'm just asking for your squad status. Do you need supplies? Uh, so sit rep basically in the field will consist of this. First off, you need to get on the radio so I know that you're alive that's really important um if you need me if you're busy right with your squad radio or whatever just say one nine standby i get it dude you're busy everything's happening uh your sit rep will consist of like two main things it's just 
do you need supplies? Is your squad good? Like, are they all living? And if you have any broken bones or things that can be put off later, uh, let me know. Just say, like, hey, I've got two broken bones. And then I'll respond with, okay. Um, are If you're 1-4, I'm going to prioritize you guys because 1-4 can't operate channel. with a broken arm. And quite literally, as you guys know, 1-4 is like the backbone of our team. We can't just say, oh, we'll do it later. You know what I mean? Uh, that's radio yeah, operations. You, you think that, for the most part, you're right. <laughs> because if we have any ta any AT or AA, then... Yeah, then we, we, we got a T-72 that pulls up on us. We're crying goodbye, because, dude, we're not going to be able to stop it. Unless one of your squad mates looted 1-4 before, and now they have a Moz or a Javi. But in a perfect situation, save 1-4, because 1-4 is going to need it. That we need 1-4 to operate. Um, User and joined one your only has one medic. Yeah, one four has one medic, so that's that. To, with a broken arm, you're trying to aim down your sights and you're just wobbling all over the show. Yeah, pretty much. So if you guys get mad because I prioritize one four, understand it's not that I don't channel. like you. It's that one four literally User has a stinger. If a hind shows up, I gotta count on one four to save all of us. <laughs> um. So that's that. I'll prioritize 1-4 over 1-6 any day of the week. No offense, even though SOP say otherwise. 1-6 is going to understand why I tell a hind was flying around. Yeah, I picked up the guy with the stinger first. Uh, I'm going to have to edit that out. Um, cool. So, anyways. User joined your that's reality of operations. I don't know how channel. else to talk about that. Uh, that's radio for sit rep. Um, if you guys are checking in and you don't hear back from one nine, say we're like seven clicks away and I just can't hear you, channel. go ahead and C tab me. Be like one two medic, two medic strong. Send or you know same thing if someone signs off one two, blah blah blah. We're one medic strong. Well, I'll have to ask you after this to. To show me how to do that, because I don't know how to do I that. I can do that right now. Dude, uh, you got your GPS, your Android? User joined your channel. Yep. Pull it up so that it's covering, like, the center of your screen. Yeah. Hit the home button. Compose. Click on a person. Obviously, the list would be much longer. Click on the back black box. User type something. Send. User joined your channel. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's how you see tab. Okay, gotcha. I goes, just had no idea. So. Yeah, no, it's all good. It goes across the whole map. I know everyone else knows. It's not like you're breaking up my radio communications, and I, I generally know what's going on. If I don't read your C tab, it's probably because I was doing something else. And fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I was getting DMs at like 11 p.m. my time to like 3 a.m. They're like, hey, I don't remember when the next training was. And I was like, oh, God, please. Like, I told you, you guys are like three to six hours ahead of me. When it's noon for you, it's like literally five crack of dawn for me. I'm trying to sleep. Uh, I think you're only – I'm only an hour ahead of you. Yeah, because you're central. User but joined your channel. our other um, EU friends – that are like 12 hours ahead. Yeah. Yeah, dude. What time is it for you right now? Uh, approximately 12:30. Oh, it's eight. Thirty. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So you you should start to understand what it's like to be on the far back side of the globe. Unfortunately, I work night shifts. Uh, User left oh. your channel. I don't mind you guys DMing me. The issue I have is when you DM me about times. Right? Like, when's the next training when it's posted in news? Mm -hmm. And then also the amount of people who say when's the next training. Like, it is an abundance of 32 different personal messages and all asking the same question. It. Yeah. Honestly, I'm, I'm about to change the Google Docs to, uh, to public so people can comment in the little sections and ask when that is so i can not have it on my discord anymore um i even created a new email just for that 
No, uh, radio communications, that's pretty much it. Let me know three or more people as mass cast. Be like, hey, 1319. That's like the first thing you should start off with. If I pick up the phone, I'll say, yes, go ahead, 13. Mass cast, give me a location. You guys know how to drop a mass cast marker with the Android? I do. Yeah. I know that. <laughs> Anyone doesn't no. know, let me know now. Yeah, I don't. I don't yeah, know. I don't. Okay, cool. Pull up your Android. We're going to go to the cool. map. You just hover over your position or wherever that mask has is. Double click with your left. Medical uh, casualty or MCI. Casualty means you have one person down and I need to respond to it because you need help. Mask has is, you know, such and such. And then it drops a little marker. It, it really just gives him a position of where exactly is the guy at that he needs to work on. It's a lot more accurate. It's guys. 30 times more faster. It's just easier all around. User left, your, channel. To User left your channel. Yeah, it's the delete yeah, marker. Delete. It's the same as the map, but 40 yeah, times I'm more faster. I don't have to sit there saying, where are you? Uh, pop a smoke grenade. Give me a visual representation, dude. The Android's great and all, but if you're hiding in bushes like mini waffles here... <laughs> Shut up. That day. Yeah, he ran me over. <laughs> he said, come help me. I saw a purple smoke grenade. I saw two uniforms. He was actually prone in a bush, and I was booking it, and he became a bumper sticker. So, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to get in because my leg User was broken. I couldn't walk any faster. <laughs> you get the general <laughs> idea. For one <laughs> night, I am booking yes. it to you because time is of the essence. Don't get mad at me. If I, you know, like, I don't have an actual visual representation of where User you are. User left your channel. User joined your channel. Yeah, you, you only have, like, squad leads position on your C-tab, right? Yeah, I only see squad leads. Uh, if you guys have head cams, I can see your, your, um, your medical. Um, if you have a head cam, I have this rugged tablet, and it allows me to track your position. But I actively have to be looking at it, and I can't do that while driving, because the rugged tablet is like two to three times larger than the cell phone. I literally can't see where I'm going. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I've had a lot of people get turned into bumper stickers recently on that uh, that hill we were doing, just because of uh, incorrect positioning. So uh, carry us purple smoke on you, a purple or green smoke. So when you call it Mascaz, I have a, I literally know where I am going. And don't you dare Still pop a white how smoke. My unctuous body got revenge on you for plowing me over. <laughs> Completely flipped my vehicle for like 20 minutes. Um, and destroyed your front wheel. On the other hand, I swear, and I will say this with all the like breath in me. Do not pop, pop a white smoke and then be like, oh, one nine, come to the white smoke. Because guess who else is popping white smoke consistently? The Russians. You guys seen it. You shot the Russian like twice and now he pops like 30 white smoke grenades and they're just flying all over the place. Or, you know, another squad pop white smoke for smoke screen. White smoke is not a color I can agree with or see. Um, don't use red smoke either. Uh... Because smoke is basically telling any air assets shoot the shit out of this. Yeah. Um, it hasn't been a real recent incident, but uh, like last map we did have a uh, D Reaper asset with an A10 just fucking cream two squads with the thirty <laughs> mil. Red smoke. Yeah, the red smoke. They got disintegrated, <laughs> dude. It was no IR strobes. They were all scattered out, walking in like a column line, and they're, they had no SL, so their SLs were like back at base, and they got shredded, and I was right next door. I was like, oh my lord. Oh no. Yeah, and I got so startled, I started booking it away, and I guess Reaper decided I was the last standing target worthy of a User 30 mil and channel. turned my ass into grass. <laughs> Yeah, I, I hated the trees, dude. The woods made it so hard to identify who's friendly and who's foe at night. But damn, he went to town on all of us. Um, 
I yeah, no, don't use red smoke because it's either going to be one four shooting at you or uh, Reaper or Demon. Like, there's a bunch of protocols, but sometimes it falls into gaps, and now you are a uh, a statistic. Actually, uh, you mentioned night. Uh, is there anything? Because I mean, smoke is really hard to distinguish at night, anyways. So, uh, should we take C-tab. like an IR? C tap um, IR strobes. Yep, IR strobes and well, use I mean, your like, C tab for positioning. Though, like, should we have like a a oh, yeah, glow stick light. as well, or whatever it's called? Uh, it's not like the IR strobe. If you already call a mask has and you've dropped it on the Android, and I see an IR strobe, you guys have seen it. They're bright as shit at like pure darkness. So I'm gonna know where you are. User joined your um, channel. That's pretty much it for night ops. You don't need a smoke User grenade or an IR chem light. There's nothing fancy to that. Because the okay. strobe is a flashing light that's going to get my attention more than a chem light ever would. Yeah, the enemy can't see him either. Yeah, that too. So. Unlike a laser. Unlike a laser, yeah. Don't don't try to put a laser in my face because it works like a flashlight when you get it right on somebody's eye. You've seen it, right? Somebody's ever flashed a laser in your eye? It yeah. sucks. Mm-hmm. Dude, pure rage. I, I turned two other people into bumper stickers because of that. They decided the laser was the best way to go, and uh, we flipped a Vic, and it rolled over them. So, don't do <laughs> that. Got... Well, we were driving on a cliff. I couldn't see the cliff. It was like it was Stalker or Demon or something. User left Dude, I was channel. terrified. Just Yeah, just lasers don't. Don't use them for Casavax. Demon and... Other assets. I think one eight's the Use only one allowed to laze, channel. right? I can't remember. Yeah. Like ge- generally speaking, six probably can six 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 six. Yeah. Generally speaking, use an IR strobe and uh, C, you know C tab for night ops. I don't. There's not a lot to it. You can already spot dudes like a click out with IR strobes. It's. It's not that bad. Um. Yeah, that's just night ops. Uh, that's radio operations as a whole and mass cases. Um, if possible, during a mass cas, tell me how many people are down the exact number and try to group them up into one spot. Um, and when you ask, like, these are people who we know are still alive, right? Yes. Like, not not ones that, like, oh, I've got two KIA sort of thing. Like, you don't need... Unconscious and KIA you, but... are two different things. Like, if you say KIA, killed in action means this dude's not coming back. <laughs> He's done for. Unless they flopped, they're not KIA. Right. Uh, unconscious or, like, if somebody dies in the process, don't worry about updating me on the radio. Just update me when I get there. Use the triage card. Mark him deceased. I'm going to say this one last time because this is very important. Minimal is walking wounded, not unconscious and with, like, you know, they're just waiting. That's delayed. Delayed still requires medical attention because you do need medical attention to wake up. So, if they're walking wounded, they are minimal. If they are unconscious, delayed, and they're if they're no pulse, need blood immediately, or require any form of super like medical attention, immediate. Uh, if you can't carry them because your legs are fine, you just actively can't carry this person. It's probably because they're deceased. Mark of deceased. Channel. Everybody good with that? Yep, yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah, that's triage. Yeah, Extremely if important. Your legs are shattered, then you'll still be able to drag, just not carry. Yeah, you'll be able to drag carry. If that User the whole carry icon is black, they're dead. They're not coming back. User joined your channel. All right. Um, I think that hit all the key points of ALS since we spent like 30 minutes going over drugs and performances. Uh, I've already taught you about fluids in the BLS. That carries over to ALS. You guys need to know that plasma does not flow slower. Saline does not make things go faster or whatnot. That's not here. That's not a thing we have on this server. I think that's a cat mod. Is that? I think it's included in cat. Long story short, it's not here. Don't worry about it. Um, We just call them fluids. And they work faster when you put three different kinds into one person at once. Um, User joined your channel. 
No, that's pretty much it. I was just going to teach you guys methods, but it's like down to the bone. Do two rounds of CPR, give them epinephrine. They'll probably have a heart rate back on the fourth time you do your second round. Um, Yeah, no, identifying critical situations where you need one nine is kind of your thing. That's the whole point of ALS is for you guys to have the knowledge and skills of what is what. If you're in a really bad situation, if you're not, and so on. It's funny because uh, many was it User was it Dewey that we were talking to about uh, the classes. The I can't remember. Um, I have no clue. It was Dewey or someone. We were talking about how to divide up the courses, and it's really important that you guys learn. There's a difference between a medic and a proficient medic because they're two different levels of skill that are going to work you faster or work you better like there's there's a huge fine line between the two a medic sure both both the proficient medic and the standard medic have the skills they have the ability to do you know start an iv and uh, give you guys fluids and whatnot and stitch you User left User but channel. the skill of being a medic is all knowledge based it is up to you guys to know, to be able to identify and understand when you need additional resources, um, more hands on deck, or, uh, you know, more medications. Like, that is 100% on you guys to call out. 1-9 doesn't know shit until you ask for it. Um, that's that. It's, it's a communication chain. It is up to you guys to be able to know when you're screwed, to know what you can do, and properly... Uh, size up your situation. User left your channel. Uh, maybe this is part of SOP for this question, but like, uh, if we just like need another medic because we've got a mask has situation, like, and you're way far away because of something, should we talk to you to get a hold of that other medic, or should User we talk to one six or a RSL to get to one six? SOPs dictate you call me. If you can't reach me, you reach out to 1-6. If 1-6 is unavailable, then you User guys are... Uh, uh, fudge. Hold on. You asked me one of the questions that I've had an answer to, but I can't remember. Long story short, uh, reality check. Call me first. If you can't reach me, call 1-6. If you can't reach 1-6, call uh, just bicker amongst each other on 39 to see who's the closest resource. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, because even though 1-6 technically is a higher ranking than me, I'm in charge of all medical situations, so you would go to your platoon medic. User I have the green light down. to say, one, you know, 1-1, one, one, if you guys are too far up and you're in mass cast, grab your people User and come back. That is my job. I can stop the platoon and move them around and uh, general resources. And 1-6 will understand. 1-6 already has a lot on his plate just doing a tactical standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, so he'll be like, okay, cool. That that chess piece is out of the field. I get it. And then I just do my thing. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. You know, I take that back. Who's the 1-6 that User is, like, super grubby about that? Is that, like... I don't Dude, think do it's you numbers. think I remember names? I think you remember the one six who screams at us because we were driving around. An hour and forty five minutes have been me in this class. I know, and I'm sorry. Long story short, there's no, no, I don't mind. I just haven't been awake long enough to remember anything. There are a couple one sixes out there who get super salty when a one nine asserts his authority in a situation. Uh, I don't remember who, but for your guys' safety, follow the SOP and call one uh, one nine first, and then. The one nines will will do their little uh, persuasion techniques to get them out. But yeah, that's all yeah, you guys should do. Your know. song and dance for one six. Yeah, that's why one nine's a whole nother class. People are like, "Oh, is ALS a one nine class?" I'm like, "Yeah, you do some things, but one nine's a command element. You have to be familiar with commanding an entire platoon." Providing medical assistance while at the same time commanding an entire platoon. Um, and then you have to know what gives you priority and what doesn't. Because if somebody is calling Mascaz and 1-6 is telling them to push and we're not at the end of the game, like we're not at restart time, 
you technically can say this is BS. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and override that, and then you just have to like talk to an Odin or whatnot, and explain yourself. Yeah, so it's it's a little bit more. And I've had a couple of incident, incidents where, uh, you know, Who's squad is mask has, I'm like trying to save them. I tell them to fall back and one six is like, no, make them push. And then I have to go get into a whole debate. Uh, I had a couple sixes who tried to make us do some really stupid things on this map. And uh, we have to fight against that. But yeah, generally speaking, call one nine. That's your guys' job. You need to call one nine for all resources. If you don't have a one nine, you guys need to radio communicate with each other congratulations you guys are now certified in ALS um, I don't know if you took notes on this I don't know what not I know we went over a lot of stuff but yeah make sure you know it because uh, in the field you're gonna be using it and people are gonna recognize you and you know I don't want to say like applaud you for it because that depends on who you're with but uh, it's important that you know this because the percentage of success that we will have in the field will be much higher. I'm going to go ahead and stop this recording now because I'm pretty sure it's also an hour long and it's going to take me two hours to upload it.